coming up. I show you my socks. Tools are dropped. Well, and Rust deleted. Welcome back to part 7 of Project Cologne, where the fixing up marathon on no longer cheap daily driver continues. Time to do the rear wheel bearings. Last time I drove this car on the Autobahn, which was yesterday, this wheel was piping hot and it smelled like someone was barbecuing an oil filter. Not good. Not to mention the noise. It's absolutely unbearable how much noise comes from the rear end. And I'm really looking forward to sorting this out. We're going to do the brakes at the same time, both sides. So let's get cracking. That goes underneath. First thing we're going to do is remove this nut here. And let's get the light going as well. Man, I look albino, don't I? The light is going directly into my head. But at least you can see. Oh, broke my screwdriver. I am an idiot, you know that? Do I have a chisel? Oh, I did, but I don't know where it is. Yeah, I'm just gonna use a big screwdriver. Yep, I think that'll do it. Stick the screwdriver here. Stop it from moving. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I love, love this thing. I think next we can remove the axle bolts on the differential. Inverted torques. E, was it 12? Why yes. That's much easier. All right, we'll remove them completely later give me back my screwdriver now compress the piston a little bit like that remove the vicious clip and now the brake caliper now that's the tightening Just, there it is. This one ABS sensor, disconnected. I have a new one anyway. And the ever so tiny brake pad. All right, now I need to get the bungee cord. Yeah, let's leave something like that. Next, remove the brake disc, give it a love tap. Easy as that. Are you going to cause problems? So you need to back out the shoes. I think you should come out, no? Yes. Now we need to remove the axle out of the car, which means we need to lower the sway bar. Let's lift the car in the air. So if you remember when I did the suspension work, shocks, I didn't replace rear sway bar bushings because the brackets were rusty. So now I bought brand new brackets, but in the meantime, I lost the bushings. I bought them, I knew I had them, and I think I left them in the box that they came with and threw them away. That's just fantastic. So I called the local shop and they're gonna have new ones tomorrow. And that's just phenomenal, you know? Buying parts twice, throwing them away. So I believe this is 13, and it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to lower the exhaust when I do this. Wheel bearing here. Ouch! Why did you do that? Hopefully now I can pull away the sway bar. One. Oh, this one is really stuck on there. Let go, you rusty. There you go. So I'm gonna unbolt sway bar link. All right, so yeah, let the sway bar dangle. There you go, like that. 
Why am I torturing myself? It's coming out. All right, good. Now we can lower the car and I'll press out the drive shaft with this thing. A jaw. There we go. I apologize for the noise. There's stuff happening over there. Okay, it's coming out. Oh, there it is. Nice and easy. And that is Axel successfully removed. Now we can hear the wheel bearing. Does not sound nice. And now to remove this hub, you need this contraption here. So let's see how this works. That goes there. Well, that's not how you do it. Where's the lug nuts? And now we need to give it a couple of kapows. I think it's coming out. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> there we are. Hello, wheel bearing. And the race stayed on the hub, of course. So if you want to reuse the hub, you have to remove the race, but I have a brand new one. So I'm just going to throw all of this into garbage. Put that smell like shit. <laughs> yep. Ugh. I need to remove the clip. Will this work? It will not. It's too small. Then why do I have you? Make sure it moves first. Let's give it some of this rust loser. Now give it a couple of smackaroonies. Nice. So maybe I can try with this then. Needle nose pliers. Not ideal. Ouch. It's out. Today is Wednesday, I think. And in order to remove this wheel bearing, you need to wear two different color socks preferably white and gray, unless it's Thursday, then you want to go with gray and black. And sometimes, you know, in case the sock thing doesn't work, you need to have proper tools. And as always, the link to this tool will be in the description. Now we need to find a suitable candidate. I think this could be it. It's not this, it is. Now we need to find a plate for the back. Oh, look at that from the first. So the plate is on the back. That goes there. And that goes there. And where's the giant nut? Here it is. There we are. This nut is giant, by the way. What size? I don't even... What? I don't even have a socket for that. 36? Nope. Bigger than that. Well, that is a bit of a problem. I mean, what size are you? 37.2. What kind of socket is that? 37? Who has that? Ah, this is what happens when you buy cheap tools from Amazon. I'm back. I borrowed this very old but neat tool from my neighbor. And that should work. And then for the back, it's... Is it 27? It would be nice if it is. Nope. And the back one is something between 28 and 30. What a precision. Oh. Something is breaking. Are we... Uh, having progress? God, I'm so strong. There you go, you have to take karate position. Yes. And there we are. And there's our bearing. The new pile of parts
so that is ready this is the new OEM wheel bearing like that that goes there it's moving Yep, that's it. It's fully seated. And now new clip goes here and we are done with the wheel bearing. Oh, that worked. Like that. I think first we're gonna take out that one. Yep, twist. And then we need to remove the cable. How does this come apart? Oh, there it is. I have a new plate, let's remove that. How do you, is there anything else holding you? Or are you just rusted on? Yes. So let's seal off the bearing. Yeah, see, that was pretty dumb. I should have done this first and then the wheel bearing, but that happens when you don't think. Mask on, let's clean some rust. Right, it's full in. And our new brake, parking shoes, all of that good stuff. Okay, good. I need to put a spring there. Oh, if this flies out. I am wearing eye protection, by the way. And it's in. Now this little thing. Oh yeah, that was easy. Will this one be easier to put in? From the first. And now when you move, where's my screwdriver? On the floor, this thing, it'll spread and retract the parking brake shoes. And then a new hub can go in. Yep, fully seated. That should not be like that. Absolutely not. I had to get help to tighten this a lot more because he was having some play. But that's done. The axle goes in. There it is, the new nut. New brake disc. Uh, the ABS sensor that connects in this box here. Oh, good, it didn't break. Fresh OEM ABS sensor. Yep, good, close the box. All right, a bit of a problem. I am a complete idiot and I used the wrong plate on the wrong wheel. That is what happened. I am a tool and I use the wrong plate back and repeat all of it again.
Mistake corrected. In case I was mumbling too much when I was doing this, I put the wrong plate on the right side of the wheel and that one was for the left. Therefore, the caliper couldn't sit. It's just really, really stupid mistake and I had to remove the hub again, the pocket brake assembly to replace it. Anyway, we are back where we were this morning when I started again. Break out the torque wrench. Done. So the torque for this thing is 250 newton meters and my torque wrench only goes up to 200. So we're going to torque it to 200 and then use the breaker bar to give it some more ooga doogas. And repair manual also says to lightly coat the surface with oil. So I'm going to use fogging oil. 195, I don't want to max it out. You do not want to force the torque wrench after it clicks. You are going to ruin it if you do that. So a bit more like that. And we're going to call that 250. Why is just everything everywhere? Chisel, chisel, where are you? Oh, found it. That's secured. The clip. There we go. And this side is done. Now we gotta do the same on the other side, except I have to lower the exhaust over there in order to remove the axle. So that's the added bonus of fun. In case you are wondering why did I go with the brake disc that has bullet holes, because race car, this isn't. They were just a little bit more expensive than the normal ones. They look cool. There is the added bonus of tiny bit performance, let's say. And I'm gonna do the same on the front and I think it's gonna look cool. And this car is going to get eventually style 135 wheels, 18 inch, and this is gonna look real nice. New soy bar brackets, bolts, nuts, and bushings that I had to go buy this morning because I lost the new ones that I bought when I did the suspension. That's garbage. So is that. So this is like that. All right, boys and girls, but mostly boys, we are done here. Now I just need to adjust the parking brake, which I absolutely hate, but it has to be done. First, I'm gonna start by loosening the cable in the cabin, and then we're gonna come and adjust here. So the cable is loose in the cabin, and I can turn the rotor freely. All right, now I cannot move it anymore. And now we need to back out 10 clicks. One, two, it is. And when I pull two clicks, there should be a slight drag. One, two. No, that's a full lock, that's not good. So back out the cable, spinning freely. Two clicks. slide drag. That's it. Just got to do the same on the other side. So the parking brake is adjusted and should work properly, but this caliper is bad. I noticed when I was pressing in the piston, it didn't move as freely as it should. The left side is much better and that sticky caliper or the sticky piston is probably the cause of my smell and noise. So the first thing on my shopping list is new calipers for the back. I could try to rebuild this one, but it's really rusty and crusty and I just don't want to look at it. And I think new calipers are not that expensive from ATE or ATE. And we're just going to slap new parts in. And while I do that, I'm also going to get stainless steel brake lines, replace this hard line because it's rusty and do 330i brakes on the front. Discs, caliper, pads and whatever else comes with it. I actually want to do 330i brakes on the back as well, but then you have to replace the complete trailing arm and all the good stuff because something with the parking brake is different. Not sure why exactly, but that's what the internet says, so I'm not gonna mess with it for now. I have some plans for this car. I don't know if it's too early to say, 
but I want to find a donor 330i with a six speed and then slap that engine and gearbox into this car. And that will be an awesome project because that's 40 horsepower more basically. This is 325i, so 192, 330s, 231. That's a hell of an upgrade. And I think that should be a really big and fun project because I've never pulled an engine out of the car. That's probably going to be sometime next year after March because that's when the M5 comes out of sleeping and that's when I drive that and then I can do stuff on this all day long. But for now, this is it. Test drive time. I completed a very thorough and long test drive and it is a different car. There is no more noise coming from the rear end. While before it was unbearable to drive this car on the Autobahn, there was so much humming, rumbling, scratching, whatever noise coming from the back, I couldn't hear myself thinking there. And last night I drove it really hard on the Autobahn, 180, 200, 210 kilometers per hour, and there is no noise coming from the back. It is really, really pleasant to drive this car again. Brakes, they're doing well. This caliper is not sticking, at least for the moment. But I think that was one of the issues that this caliper was kind of frozen, so I managed to kind of free it up. But that's next on the shopping list, rear calipers and 330i brakes for the front. And now onto the suspension. I've put maybe 2,000 kilometers since I overhauled complete suspension and installed Coney shocks. And I promised I'm gonna do a small update. And the ride in this car is exactly what I was hoping for. The car is extremely comfortable. When I drive it around the city, Frankfurt has really bad roads, a lot of potholes, and when I'm hitting all of that stuff, it's nice and soft. But when I like get on it, on the Autobahn, on back roads, it's still firm and sporty. It still has that E46 handling, and that's, that's what I wanted. So I highly recommend those shocks. Not sponsored or anything like that. I just, I love those shocks. They're really good. And the car handles phenomenal. So when it comes to E46, that'll be always my choice the only thing that i have a gripe with is the front end height i installed m sport factory springs and it's still kind of high i mean i can still put three fingers in there and i guess that's the factory right height but when you compare it with the back which sits pretty perfect the rear is uh, the front is too high so i'm not sure what i can do about that other than installing lowering springs which i really don't want to do but i'm hoping as i drive a little bit more maybe it goes a tiny bit down because that's that will be about perfect but let's see what happens i'm gonna drive some more and if i become really unhappy with this i'm gonna do something about it but for now i'm gonna leave it like this and also this car in summer is going to get 18 inch style 135 wheels and maybe that fills up that gap even more but overall this is a great great daily driver now really enjoying this car and now we are going to travel back in time before the winter came and before i took the interior apart and found that bit of rust on the floor Alrighty, so now i'm going to drop off the car with the body shop so they can remove and repair this rust here this isn't something that i can fix on my own i know nothing about bodywork and painting so i found a really nice german guy who doesn't speak english and i don't speak german so it's kind of a dream team you know but anyway, he's going to cut out this piece here, weld in a new one, and then repaint it here, and then cut it somewhere there. And as seen in part one, that quarter panel was already done at one point, and you can see the huge color difference between, well, why am I even pointing out between this and that? So he's gonna try and color match it. He told me he's pretty sure he can get it correctly. The bumper is also wrong color, but I don't care about that because I think come springtime, we're gonna install the M-Sport bumpers then. But for now, it's really important to take care of the rust because I don't want that to spread. And that's the only spot of rust on the whole car. And once that is taken care of, the car is completely rust-free. Here's how to repair and remove rust properly. The area is ground down to the bare metal so that the rust is exposed. Then the rusty bit is cut out and removed, leaving only good metal behind. The new metal piece is cut to shape and welded in and weld smoothed out. Then comes the primer, a lick of paint and finally clear coat. Sounds simple yet requires very good skill and knowledge. The car is back from the painter and just have a look. The guy did an excellent job, really did. He cut a bit of rust from the inside and this bit here was actually good so he didn't have to do anything there, just treat it. 
and the work was done extremely well you can't even tell that something was done here it's really nice and smooth and the overall quality is also really perfect there's no weird cutoff lines overspray dirt nothing just really good quality paint job when it comes to paint matching well i'm not gonna lie it's about 99 percent perfect if you come in under certain angles you can see that this upper part which is the original paint is a bit more on the gray side and that's a bit more on the green side but when you do this type of work on a car that's this old 20 years basically you have to have realistic expectations because it's never going to be 100% perfect in order to get 100% perfect i would have to repaint the whole car and most of the time this is not even noticeable i don't know how it's coming out on the camera but from where i'm looking at you can't notice it that much so i had a conversation with him he said we can try something different but to be honest why waste time and effort it's really good as it is right now The rest of the car, the paint is already not perfect, but again, this is supposed to be a daily driver. There's clear coat that's gone here. Not going to do anything about that because the whole hood needs to be repainted. There's a small dent here. Again, that's for good luck. And then these two doors were repainted and it was repainted extremely poorly. I don't know if it can be seen, but there's a lot of like weird lines, just overall really, really bad finish and not enough clear coat as well so this cannot be polished i already tried and it's just not working so these two doors are not good but again i'm not going to do anything about it because it is supposed to be a cheap car this side is perfect there's no rust and as far as the, all of the fenders and typical rust spots on the e46 there aren't any so that's really good the only spot that's left it's on the floor of the car around one of those drain holes there's a little bit of rust there and once I remove the carpet, I'm gonna have him inspect that. If it, if it needs fixing, he's going to cut out the bit from there and also repair it. That's all for this episode. In the next one, we'll retrofit rear power windows, power folding mirrors, and hi-fi speakers. Thank you for watching and see you next time.